From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We help you survive. Well, hello, Mr. and Mrs. America. I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you to this Tuesday's edition of For the People on this June the 20th, 2017. There's some big doings in Georgia going on. We're going to be talking about this. Uh, As you're aware, uh, Tom Price, Health and Human Service Director, uh, gave up his seat in Georgia. And that's uh, why there's this big runoff today. More than $50 million has been spent on the two candidates there. And this uh, very special election runoff in terms of individual donations, Ossoff um, vastly uh, outpaced Handel with nearly $24 million from the breakdown here that I'm seeing now, $4.5 million and millions more was spent by outside groups. Most of uh, Ossoff's money has come from out of state, especially from states like, not a surprise, California and New York. And the Atlanta Journal-Constitution says uh, the analysts show there just 3.5% of his donations between the end of um, March and May came from Georgia. Handel has also uh, benefited from outside spending, but in mostly hasn't come from uh, uh, hasn't come to her campaign directly. Rather, groups like the Congressional Leadership Fund, Political Action Committee, backed by House Speaker Paul Ryan, uh, they have spent millions on her behalf as well. National Republicans broken down House campaign arm added four point five million, and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce chipped in another seven figures. Folks, important. We've held this seat forty years, and uh, there was a uh, ad that has been running in Georgia, and there's been a lot of ads. As a matter of fact, they've been running commercial wise, and this is not supported, by the way too favorably uh, as far as um, the Republicans or the Democrats, just because some of the language that was used. But I thought it was a very highly effective uh, spot pointing out just what a lot of the left is uh, talking about. But when you exploit tragedy for political gain, it's not a good idea. And let me just uh, preface that this has been uh, condemned by both sides. But here is a spot that is, in fact, running in Georgia right now. Now the unhinged left is endorsing and applauding shooting Republicans. When will it stop? It won't if John Ossoff wins on Tuesday. Because the same unhinged leftists cheering last week's shooting are all backing John Ossoff. And if he wins, they win. Stop them. Stop them now. Stop John Ossoff. Stop Nancy Pelosi. Vote Karen Handel for Congress. Vote. Principal Leadership Project PAC paid for this ad and is solely responsible for its content. And by the way, Ossoff... <laughs> It's not even a member of the district at all, which is, uh, but uh, Karen is. So we're just uh, praying for good results. So this would be really not a very good thing. Um, but, uh, you know, knowing that it was a very slim margin that Donald Trump actually won, uh, you know, votes there from that district, 1%. So it's, um, it's going to be a tight runoff from what a lot of people say. Um, this is the take on House Paul, uh, Speaker Paul Ryan and what he said a little bit later on uh, up, up at Capitol Hill. Here's well, it. it means that the Democrats threw the entire kitchen sink at this thing. They spent tens of millions of dollars uh, trying to pick up this congressional seat. It's a it's a marginal congressional district. Um, I would rather be us, the Republicans, than the Democrats going into this race. I think really? Karen Handel. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think Karen Handel fits this district. Um, the Democrat is, is, is a liberal Democrat who does not reflect this district. They're throwing everything they can at this race. Um, again, like I said before, I'd rather be the Republicans than the Democrats going into the evening. But we got to get our voters to turn out. I think everybody's going to try to read into it one thing or the other. I don't think it's a one-issue thing. I really think it's who best fits this district. And Karen Handel clearly, 
fits this. She's actually from the district. The Democrats aren't even from the district. So I think that that's really what it comes down to. And I think, you know, prognosticators will try and take something out of it. But again, I feel pretty good going into the evening. Um, Republicans just have to come home. They have to go vote. They have to make sure they turn out. And that's the thing you always worry about special elections. You worry about the turnout rate. All right, folks, if you're in Georgia, all right, that's how you say it. If you're in Georgia, you, you got to make sure that you go out and vote. It's very serious. So I hope to God uh, we pull off a uh, huge win and it should speak volumes. But Hollywood is pouring in all kinds of money, just like they did just the election. But they realize that really it's uh, it's it's very pivotal and it's very, very important. And uh, we certainly do not want to lose a seat. But uh, leadership majorly, majorly this important. Is an opportunity for Georgia to elect some fresh leadership that's focused on delivering results for folks at home. We are going to rock Nancy Pelosi's world. All right, so we're going to be watching uh, this uh, Georgia race. And uh, by the way, Handel was uh, ripping into the West Coast donors, buying his seat for the uh, South, uh, uh, South Carolina contest, takes a uh, second billing. It says... Uh, Republican congressional candidate Karen Handel ripped into Democratic opponent John Ossoff for the flood of outside donations that have bumped in to his war chest and helped make Tuesday's Georgia special election the most expensive House race in U.S. history. That's how important this is. That's why a lot is riding on it. That's why we're kind of focusing in so you can kind of hear some of the noise of what's going on. But it's kind of a big deal. Uh, even if you don't win, uh, well, we think that, uh, you know, you, it doesn't matter if you don't live. It's uh, a victory for Republicans and uh, would be a victory for, obviously, Democrats. So we're behind you, Georgia. We're all behind you. The president's behind you. A lot of money's behind you. We have to pray that uh, we have a big victory in Georgia. And like I say, 1% wasn't very impressive there in that district for uh, Trump. But uh, hopefully um, Republicans, as Paul Ryan says, House Speaker Paul Ryan, that Republicans come home. We're going to be talking a little bit uh, right now about uh, the death of uh, Otto Warmbier. And I don't know about you, but listen, he's not a member of my family. Um, you know, obviously he's not my son. Uh, it's nobody that I've ever met, but he's an American. And I just, I'm troubled by how he came back to the States. Now, I can hear in Trump's voice that he's troubled, too, that it, that it upsets him. And it grieves me for a lot of different reasons. There's atrocities that go on around the world every single day. A lot of administrations have not been able to. I mean, we're talking generation after generation to be able to deal with South Korea in a way to where it would stop them from doing the brutal brutality, the stuff that they do to their citizens, the jails, the gulags, all the heinous acts uh, that they do. It's just bizarre. I, I've been telling you for the last several months how they beat corpses that are already dead. I mean, this is how dark and this is how dangerous, this is how warped and decrepit these people are over there. They're horrible. And just to think the people that want to prop them up, keep them in power, China definitely needs to step up to the plate. There's no doubt about it. And I hope China actually does something, um, you know, for, for their future and for the stability. Uh, clearly, they're in uh, that part of the world, but. They are hell-bent, folks, on being able to strike us with missiles that have nukes on them. They're trying night and day in a fever pitch to be able to reach that destination, and they get further and further along being able to get up to outer space. What if they hit one of our major satellites, folks? You ever think about that? What if they be, are able to get into outer space, which they have? And that trajectory is over North America. Ted Koppel said, lights out for America. An EMP right over North America into the atmosphere would take our power grids out. Our, our, our vehicles would be useless. Computers would be useless. Society, as you know, it would come to a halt. This is what they want. Iran wants the very same thing for us. 
living some very interesting time, folks. Uh, and a lot of people are uh, talking about uh, the involvement of China and how important it would be. Mike Huckabee was talking about that, and uh, he feels that uh, we definitely need their help. Here is Arkansas Governor, former Governor Mike Huckabee. They have to be involved as a defensive measure. If they're involved, I believe it's possible to happen. It's not going to be pretty, but it's it's less, uh, let's say, messy than if we wait until North Korea gets to the place where they can launch nuclear devices on a long-range basis, or even, for that matter, on a short-range basis. And we know they're just crazy enough to do it. So you have that issue, but you also have the humanitarian. People of North Korea are basically starving. If they're not in the military, they're starving. And it's, it, it's not going to get better. I mean, let's quit kidding ourselves and say, well, one day they'll have a leader that'll be smart, intelligent, and want to be a real player in the world. No, they're not. Uh, and, and so I think the ambassador was spot on, and it's a tragedy situation. But what has happened to Otto Warmbier has made it now personal and real to the American public in a way that before they just thought this rogue regime lighting candles and firing them up into the atmosphere and having a big fireworks show. I think they now know that there's more behind it than that. And there's a lot more behind it, um, obviously. Um, and whatever they did, I'm sure there was a nightmare that was lived out because his heart stopped and it killed his brain tissue to never, I mean, they knew he was dead. They were keeping him alive with something. Their doctors over there kept him alive and knew that he was going to die shortly, sending a message uh, to the United States in some way. But they clearly knew that he wasn't going to make any recovery. And obviously in that state, that vegetative state for a year for a year or a little bit more than that can you bring bringing him back to their parents i mean at least they'll be able to have a proper burial in this country but it does bother me and i just i i'm just kind of just weirded out i guess in a way that uh we do a lot of good around the world and the one that just really just bothers me and irks me is the reluctance on the part of Barack Hussein Obama, who had eight years uh, to do something and had done nothing but yet allow these uh, rogue nations to be able to be emboldening them uh, and have emboldened them. Um, look at Russia. Look, look, look at the arrogance uh, that they have for our Air Force and for our Navy. I mean, these people uh, are just... I think coming down off this Obama high that they were on and now realize that there's somebody Ronald Reagan ish that actually is tough with the military and does not going to allow people passively to be able to get away with these things. And it does bother them. And uh, we're going to have to go in and uh, start fixing some of these things. And, you know, I know it's going to be a bloody war if we go into it. But Jack Keane uh, was talking a little about Russia and uh, the whole situation with uh, armament and uh, what we have and what they don't have um, with this uh, cat and dog game in the air. What was just, what, five feet from one of our uh, our jets the other day? Just bizarre. Just the other day. Just yesterday. Here's Jack Keane. Well, certainly. I mean, the United States is going to protect its forces on the ground, protect its bases from any incursion. And we would use military force to do that. We've already demonstrated that. We're shooting Iranian drones out of the sky. We shot a Syrian uh, airplane out of the sky. It, and if Russians did something like that, we would shoot them down as well. But the Russia's not going to do that for the reason I just stated. They have their strategic asset. They got all they wanted out yeah. of this deal. Okay, that's Russia. This was interesting how Mike Huckabee put this back to uh, South Korea in our discussion at hand, but uh, there's just a lot going on around the world, and so we got a an hour. We try to pack everything in, but uh, little sounds of around the world, what's going on, and some of the thoughts that are happening in the news. But Mike Huckabee on the pesky kid. This is like the pesky kid who is maybe in your family, but he's broken every window in every home in the neighborhood, and you cannot continue to ignore uh, his actions, and you've got to take some decisive intervention otherwise it's not going to be a broken window it's going to be a burned down house mm -hmm. that's how they have to look at it and there's got to be an intervention you just can't let this keep going because the longer it goes the more potential north korea has uh not just to kill one american at a time but to kill tens of thousands of americans uh with some inner 
intercontinental ballistic device that may have a nuclear uh, war cone on the top of it. That's right. There's a smart guy that certainly knows what 